Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Sports and Other But Sports with Kent Sterling for Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill and his entire staff, they're covered from head to toe in PPE. They're trying to keep themselves safe. They're trying to keep you safe. They're patient safe. They're trying to put you in a position where you feel good about going to the dentist again to get an examination and a cleaning and to get stuff fixed that you need to get fixed because dental health is inexorably connected to cardiac health. You don't want to let other health care issues kind of fall asunder as you deal with your fear of the coronavirus. Going to today's dentistry is as safe as possible. They use all the strategies to keep this virus at bay and to protect their patients. Give them a call, 317-849-2933. Really, really good, top-notch conversation today on 1070 The Fan between Dan Dockich and Matt Painter, the head basketball coach at Purdue. Painter yesterday found out that Nogel Eastern is going to transfer. He's putting his name in the transfer portal. He is wheels up. And Dan and Matt had a really sincere and honest and transparent conversation about college basketball and about the perils of transferring. Now, I know that transferring impacts negatively college basketball programs where the kids are transferring from. Right, But that didn't sound like what Matt Painter was talking about today. What it sounded like today is that he wants guys to stick around for their own good. Right, Allowing players to transfer, student athletes to transfer, I think is something that should happen. I think the NCAA should allow one penalty-free transfer, immediate eligibility, as you leave in the next academic year. All right. I think that that is something that should happen, not because it's good for the student athletes, but I think it's something that as as a guy like Nogel Eastern leaves a place like Purdue, people are going to be able to point to that transfer and say, you know what? You better be careful. You don't necessarily want to leave. You better dot your I's and cross your T's as you make this decision, because remember, Nogel Eastern. Okay. Eastern is a kid who averaged less than five points a game scoring last year. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife defender. He can defend a bunch of positions, but offensively he can't play. He just finished his junior season. He declared for the NBA draft. He got some feedback from people that evidently he didn't like, and he thinks he's got to go someplace else to buffet his NBA resume. He wants to play in the NBA. He's focused on all the wrong details. It's everybody's dream to make millions of dollars and play in the NBA. I'd love to play in the NBA and make millions of dollars. I get it, okay? But not everybody is supposed to play in the NBA. And no Jelly Eastern to this point has shown himself to be one of those guys. You got to work your ass off. You can't worry about adversity at the level it exists at Purdue. If you want to go to the NBA and make millions of dollars, that's preposterous. No, Jell Eastern is 0 for 7 shooting threes his last two seasons at Purdue. He has hit less than 50% of his free throws, at least he did last year. These are not numbers that are going to uh, entice an NBA franchise to draft him or sign him as a free agent. Those are sub G League numbers. Sure, he could go play in Europe and he could make some money, but that's not what he's looking for. Look, there are a lot of reasons to stay. There are some reasons to go. Sometimes it's a good fit. Demisi Anderson going to Loyola of Chicago from Indiana. Good fit. That's a win-win. Indiana gets a scholarship back from a kid who wasn't going to be a contributor at any point during his time at Indiana. Demisi Anderson, he goes to Loyola, where he's going to be a component to that team. Whether it's successful or not, we're going to see. But Porter Moser is going to use him up there in Rogers Park on the far north side of Chicago in the Gentile Center. And we'll see how that goes. But we know how it was going to end if he stayed in Indiana. I totally get Demisi Anderson leaving. I even get Matt Harms leaving a little bit. Because Matt Harms is going to go to BYU, and he's going to get used extensively. And I really think that Matt Harms leaving Purdue is a way that it's a uh, addition by subtraction is a little bit harsh. I'm trying to find some other phrase for it. But that's basically what it is. Purdue's going to be a better basketball team because Trevion Williams is going to be a better guy in the pivot for Purdue than Matt Harms would have been at Purdue. So that one, I kind of understand, but there are two points, and we'll get to the second one in a minute. The first point is great radio. 
And college basketball coaches like Matt Painter, who use the media as they do to advance their explanations and be transparent and tell people what the hell's going on. You love these guys. I had a bunch of interviews with Matt Painter. I loved every one of them. It was like talking to a guy. You're just having a conversation about basketball. I'd go up to Purdue, talk to him after a workout, and, you know, I kept him one time for like 18 minutes, which is way long. And, and I say, hey, man, I am really, really sorry for keeping you that long. Uh, but I kept having another question that I needed to have answered. And he said, hey, if I'm not doing it with you, I'm doing it with somebody else. I talk basketball all the time. I loved talking to Matt Painter. I would look forward to talking to Matt Painter every time we got the opportunity to talk because he was so forthcoming and transparent. Other coaches have trouble with this. They either kind of dance around the truth or they don't make themselves available at all. Both are a mistake. Just be a human being, have a conversation, engage kind of that instinct in the host to trust you. And if you earn their trust, then they are going, I mean, look, if you trust them, they're going to trust you. That's the way it works. Trust is reciprocal. They will reciprocate if you show trust toward them. And Matt Painter trusts radio hosts, and he is a great guy to talk to as a result of that. Dan Dockich does a wonderful job with interviews. And and one thing, you know, there was a uh, tweet yesterday uh, from Jason Barrett, who's a sports talk radio consultant. And uh, there's a story on his website about Dan Dockich getting into media, and he tagged me in it because of my role in bringing Dan into media and hiring him at 1070. And it was mentioned that Jeff Rickert has done a, a wonderful job at the station. Dan said that uh, he, he's been very helpful, and he has. You listen to 1070 The Fan today, and it sounds terrific. The interviews are guys asking questions and then waiting as the, as the answer is completed. And it's really, really good. And Dan was terrific today. Ask a question, get out of the way, let Matt Painter answer, engage him in kind of a, a conversation. And it was really enlightening. And it was exactly what radio should be. And radio doesn't need to be all this stuntage to go get listeners. What it can be is a really good, enlightening conversation that allows us to understand what the hell's going on with our favorite team or our favorite players or, or develop a perspective or, or, you know, be witness to a perspective that we wouldn't otherwise be privy to. That's what radio is great at. And Dan did it at the highest possible level today. I absolutely loved his conversation with, uh, with Matt Painter. And, and speaking of that, I, I got to tell you, the conversation that JMV had yesterday with Tucker Barnhart was terrific. Tucker Barnhart is a really smart guy. JMV got answers about the potential for a resumption of play around the 4th of July with Tucker Barnhart. It, it was terrific. It was really, really good. You felt like you were better informed for listening to that conversation, just as was true with today's conversation between Dan Dockich and Matt Painter. So let's talk about the transfer issue. I believe that people ought to be free to transfer once without penalty. You shouldn't have to sit for a year. As you kind of, you know, evolve into a uh, a player at the new place, all right, at your new school, I, I just don't see see that as necessary because I think it's good for the guys to learn from it. I think it's good to point to somebody else and say, "Hey, this guy screwed up. I don't want to screw up, so I'm not going to do what that guy did." I, I don't think you need to legislate positive behavior choices because. Positive behavior choices for people who have any kind of intellect at all become pretty instinctive once you see enough people screw up, right? So that's where I am on the transfer rule. I don't think you need to legislate against it. So here are the things, and Matt Painter brought up some of these, reasons to stay that a lot of people overlook. And one of the reasons to stay, for no Jelly Eastern to stay, is to be there for his team, and remain committed to that program and to his teammates. Go, Come back to Purdue for a senior season and try to win a Big Ten title. What is wrong with that? How is that not a worthy goal, or how is that not worthy of your attention rather 
than trying to figure out a way to shoehorn yourself into a program where you might be exposed to the NBA at a level that you're not at Purdue, despite the illogic of that belief. There's nothing wrong with playing with a bunch of guys, seeing them as brothers, and balling out with them. I think that's really, really good. And that's what you wind up doing when you become an adult, and these guys aren't adults, when you become an adult and you work for a business, if you're there only for yourself and you work as part of a team, you're only there for your own glory, you're not going to go very far. But if you nut up and you work at helping others and being a contributor to a team in the best way you can, you got a real chance of developing a skill set as a human being that's going to make you very valuable to employers. Uh, another thing is that you've got to learn to overcome adversity. you got to fight through it, man. If you can't figure out what the answer is, and I can tell you the answer for No Gel Eastern, the answer is hard work because the answer is always hard work. That's what they don't tell you. That's the only thing that you need to learn in college is that the answer to what you want is always hard work. That's the key. That is the switch that needs to flip. You cannot be lazy and triumph. You just can't. That's not the way it works. Because while you're being lazy, the guy across the street's busting his ass. And if the guy across the street's busting his ass, it isn't going to be long before he passes you on the depth chart or in mock drafts or in some other measure that's important to you. If you work really hard, you're going to start passing people. It seems like No Gel Eastern wants the easy answer to be the available answer for him and not the tough answer. And it's the tough answer where the glory lies, right? Because you need to learn in college that adversity is something that you triumph over, that you succeed You succeed in part because of adversity, the adversity that you have have experienced. But the other thing is you need to figure out that it's the fighting through the adversity, regardless of the level of success you achieve because of that fight. It's there. That's the fun stuff. Anybody can do it when it's easy. When the odds are stacked against you, that's when it's tremendous. That's when there's all kinds of fun to be had and, and satisfaction to be gained. And no, Jelly Eastern is trying to find a way around his problem rather than through it, and that doesn't get it done. Another thing is you need to improve in the way those before you improved, and you need to use the methodology that others used in order to improve. And there are, a, there are plenty of guys who've played basketball at Purdue who have found their way to the success that you want, whether it's Swanigan. We talked about it before. Swanigan or, uh, you know, Hummel or Etwan Moore or Juwan Johnson. Bunches of guys, Carson Edwards, they're all at where you want to be. So figure it out. What did they do? The easiest way to figure out how to succeed is to talk to somebody who succeeded and ask them how they did it and then do what they did. That's easy. Like if you want to plot your own course at every turn in your life, that, hey, Godspeed. But if you want to make it simple for yourself so you don't have to learn everything through trial and error, you, you ask somebody, call Etwan Moore on the phone. You get him on the phone, Etwan. How'd you get to the NBA? How have you made $63 million or however much money Etwan Moore has made during his NBA career? Etwan Moore will tell you, I worked my ass off. You got no idea how many buckets I shot or how many ball handling drills I executed at two in the morning in the practice facility. All right? Ask Juwan. I know exactly how Juwan did. I know Juwan Johnson. Juwan Johnson's a great dude, and he has a tireless work ethic. That's how you do it. Ask those guys at Butler how they went to the national championship game in 2010 and 11. You know how they did it? They worked harder than anybody else. They worked hard, they worked together, and they worked smart. That's what you do. It's all about hard work. Just call these guys up, the guys who have succeeded. Ask them, look, watch, you don't even have to call anybody. Just watch the last dance. How did Scottie Pippen become Scottie Pippen? He worked his ass off. Yeah, he sat down with 1.8 seconds left. Yeah, he had a migraine. 
All right, yeah, he had foot surgery right before the season started in 97 and 98, but he worked his ass off to get where he was. <clears throat> Not even going to mention Michael Jordan. Has anybody worked harder than Michael Jordan at basketball or, frankly, anything else? Has anybody sacrificed more than Michael Jordan did to win those six championships? Nobody. Nobody. How about this? And Matt Painter mentioned this during the interview with Dan. Because you stay because the sense of belonging to a place is beneficial spiritually and tangibly. These guys are leaving. All right. They're going someplace else. They're turning their nose at Purdue University as anybody who transfers does. And they are cutting the cord between themselves and that university. This is the place where if you do it right, that becomes kind of a second home. And that basketball program becomes something that you will belong to forever. And these guys are foregoing that in order to play one year of basketball someplace else. That is short-sighted, and it's stupid, and it's illogical, and they shouldn't do it. Tangibly, look, do you think that Purdue graduates are not going to employ these guys do you think they are not going to get jobs, no Jelly Eastern and Matt Harms, if they stuck around for that fourth year? Do you think that Ryan Klein is not going to benefit from his relationship with Purdue University? Do you think that Dakota Mathias is not going to benefit from his relationship with Matt Painter and Purdue University? Of course he is. How about Vincent Edwards? Of course he is. All those guys, they are going to benefit from that relationship for the rest of their lives. When you cut that cord, that relationship is severed forever. Mitch Daniels, Purdue, you, you got guys all over Purdue, and you got a bunch of well-heeled alums who love to take care of former players, who love to take care of, of basketball players from the 80s, 90s, the, the zeros, the teens, they love that stuff, for God's sake. And what happened is that no Jell Eastern has said, nah, I don't need it. I'm going to go someplace else. I'm going to ball out and I'm going to play in the NBA, which is absolutely ridiculous and stupid because no Jell Eastern does not have the game necessary to be a rotational player in the NBA, period, end of conversation. Is, is there a chance that if the switch goes on, the kid like goes crazy the, throws up four million shots, becomes a, a, a mediocre NBA level shooter that he couldn't, you know, find his way into a roster for a ten day contract or something like that. Sure, but in ten years, no, Jelly Eastern isn't going to be playing basketball, and he's going to have to do something else. Staying at Purdue would have fortified his resolve to the point where he would have been better at it, and he would have been better, uh, better connected to be in a position to go ahead and live a good full life post-basketball. But he's throwing all of that away in order for short-term hope. And it's, it's foolish hope that he someday is going to play in the National Basketball Association. It's completely ridiculous. So and you know what? It's really too bad. And, and that's one of the things about the coronavirus and this quarantine, the stay at home and all of that, that I think is too bad. Because I think if Nogel Eastern had been around the coaches more often and had been around his teammates more often, I think maybe that connectivity to Purdue would have existed and maybe he would have been dissuaded from pursuing the path that he's going to pursue. And it's a shame. And if like people who care about him, really care about him, are going to have a serious conversation with him, maybe there's time for him to uh, unring that bell and go back to Purdue and understand that he's got more work to do there and his potential as a human being moving forward, not just as a, a, a professional player at some level, but beyond that, is going to be best served as a Boilermaker. And Purdue's basketball program would be better for him. With Harms leaving, he's the only senior. He's the captain. He's the guy. He gets to lead. It's his turn, for God's sake. And he's going to deny himself all of that to go to someplace new where somebody's going to promise him 12 shots a game and try to figure out how to get him a look at, at a, a, a second-round draft selection in the NBA, which is not going to happen. 
And that's a shame. Uh, Tomorrow morning, Breakfast with Kent, 8 o'clock on Facebook Live, 8.15 on Periscope and Twitter. At 11.15-ish, we're going to read the uh, the very last parts of the book, Oops, The Art of Learning from Mistakes and Adventures, uh, that we haven't read already. That's my book. I wrote it. I lived it. I made mistakes. I don't want no Jelly Eastern to have to write oops, you know, when he turns 50, for God's sake. I don't want that for that kid. Don't make this mistake. Go back, call Matt Painter and say, sorry, coach, I screwed up. I listened to the wrong people. Please take me back. Will you take me back, please? That'd be a great result. That's the best possible result for No Jelly Eastern. Uh, All this brought to you by the great people of today's dentistry. Give them a call, 317-849-2933.